Molecular. For our today's video, I'm going to talk about the temperature. Temperature, as we will see in, in your textbook definition and some other resources, we have different definitions for temperature. But one of the easiest one to memorize is measure of how hot or cold an object. So this is a very basic and fundamental definition we need have for the temperature. For temperature units, we need to know we have three different units. Degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, and Kelvin. As you see here, I told you degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius and Kelvin. I didn't say degrees Kelvin, so please pay attention. And whenever we are report Kelvin, scale temperature, we always say capital K. Temperature reported in Kelvin, capital K. Whenever we are going to work with the temperature concepts, we need to know how to convert one unit to another unit. So they are like in measured numbers. We are going to convert one unit to another unit. For our class, we need to know this equation on the left side of the slide to convert from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. If you memorize the first one, you just need to rearrange that one to get the second one. Degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 1.8 times degrees Celsius plus 32. So this is the one equation we need to know regarding the conversion factors. Another conversion factors for converting degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Because degrees Celsius is most commonly used temperature scale, and that is why we need to know how to convert that one to other units like Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So we convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin by this slide. In this equation, K is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. For some textbook like us, it says 273.15. So it depends on the textbook we are working on. It may have a slightly change. So for our class, I may consider 273.15. To show you there is no difference between the answers that we get at the end. If we have a quick review regarding the temperature scales by this slide, at this slide on the left side you will find that the melt point or freezing point of water at 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and 273 K. Freezing point is the same as melting point. If you remember, when we wanted to review physical changes, melt and freeze, they are opposite of each other. Conversion of solid to liquid and liquid to solid. One of those is exothermic, another is endothermic. Just remember that. So, melting point of water or freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. If I'm going to plug in here, 0 degrees Celsius, so 1.8 times 0 plus 32. So 1.8 times 0, it gives us 0 plus 32, 32. That is why we find this 32. And if we plug in here to find the Kelvin, 0 degrees Celsius plus 273, 0 plus 273, it gives us 273. So this is the method we apply to find the any numbers in the temperature for these different scales. And they are information you will see whenever we are going to convert one to another one. We have one most important thing in the temperature scale of Kelvin. We call it absolute zero. This is the lowest temperature in our universe that we theoretically can imagine. So absolute zero is zero Kelvin degrees Celsius. If we plug in the equations, this is the number in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the absolute zero. Negative 273 degrees Celsius, negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. One thing, as you see here, the lowest temperature in Kelvin is zero. So it means we don't have a negative number for Kelvin. We don't have something below zero in Kelvin. 
always the lowest temperature in Kelvin is zero, and we call it absolute zero. I'm going to work with some examples here, as we told you. As I said, degree Celsius plus 273.15 or 273. It depends on the problem, independent textbook, we are going to work on this. For our class, I'm going to work with this one. See what is the difference between the two equations and I give it you. Question says convert 723 degrees Celsius to both these temperature scales. Degrees Celsius to Kelvin. You just need to plug in this equation. When you plug in, you will find 996. You don't report it. You don't report 0.15. What's that? What do you think about this? 723 plus 273.15 it gives you 996k the reason because whenever you have addition for your addition we just need to remember that the rule says few as decimal places this number has two decimal places this number has no decimal places so none and two decimal places so we should have no decimal places here and that is fine we always have a number like this so it depends on the textbook again some authors prefer to have like that to most accurate conversion sometimes it's just skipped to convert 723 degrees to degrees Fahrenheit we just need to plug in here and get this number you just need to calculate by your calculator and report your final answer. I may ask you to work on this example. You may pause this video and after that you may solve this problem to make sure you get the cost. Question, question says what is the temperature if 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is converted to degrees Celsius? Alright friends. The conversion factor between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit is like this number 1.8 times degrees Celsius plus 32 we plug in 98.6 as a degrees Fahrenheit whenever you have this one you need to rearrange your equation minus 32 should be added to both sides and then divide by 1.8 so your number is 37 this is the temperature that we may find based on this conversion. This is our normal body temperature. You may have more practice on your workshop and you have some examples on your textbook. Please work on them. Another concept we need to work on is energy. Energy in physics defined as amount of anything to be used to raise the one gram of water by one degree Celsius. We call it calorie and this is the one unit of energy. We have two types of unit in energy, calorie and joules. So we have always conversion factor between the units in the chemistry and in the physics we have more units. So if you are going to learn something in energy you need to look at the physics textbook. But in chemistry, we prefer to work with the calorie and the joule. In nutrition, nutrition science, we have one type of energy, what type of energy you need. We call it kilocalorie, and we report like 1,000 calories. Kilo means 1,000. And we report that one by capital C. If you read the food labels and you are interested to know how much energy you can get from this food, after serving one small size of that, the C reported in any foods like any food labels and fruit or something like that is the capital C. It means one thousand calorie. In our class, we are going to end our chapter three by working on a specific heat capacity. This is the one concept you need to work on and do some discussion activity in our class. When an object is heated or cold, if we have something to heat them or cool them, 
the amount of energy absorbed is related to three factors, three items. The first item is amount of material. How much material do we have? Another one, how much of temperature change should be applied? One degree Celsius we are going to change, or 200 degrees Celsius we are going to change. And last thing, it depends on the texture, identity of our substance. We call it the nature of the substance. If we are going to formulate that, we have this equation. Q is equal to mc delta t. m represents mass. C, we call it a specific heat capacity. We call it capacity. We are going to talk about change of energy because, because we are going to put this in on the flame. So this is the heat. And specifically, we are going to talk about one substance. So we call it a specific heat capacity. And delta T is the temperature change, losing or gaining. So we need to know how to work with that. Q is the factor represent energy. So one example for this one. What quantity of energy in joules is required to heat a piece of one substance? Here, iron. Weighting 1.3 grams from 25 degrees Celsius to 46 degrees Celsius. To solve this problem, first we need to know what type of information do we have. What quantity of energy in joules? It means we need to find Q. So if we have this equation, we need to find Q. It is required to heat a piece of iron weighting 1.3 grams. This is a mass, 1.3 grams. I'm reporting this here. And delta T is temperature change from 25 degrees Celsius to 46 degrees Celsius. So Delta T means we just need to find the difference between these two. Final temperature always minus initial temperature. 46 minus 25. So we will find 21 degrees Celsius. We call it delta T. And for this problem, C is given. So you don't need to memorize any specific heat capacity. Always given by problem. You just need to know how to plug in this equation. M, 1.3, C, this number 0.45 and delta T 21 degrees Celsius. You are going to multiply these three numbers. You will find by your calculator this number. And last step to solve our problem, check sig fix. Here we have two sig fix, multiplied by two sig fix and three sig fix. So we just need to report by female sig fix, we report by two sig fix. So we have to keep one and two and drop this digit two is smaller than 5, we just need to drop it. And the correct answer is 12, and the unit is joule. So 12 joule is the correct answer for this problem. All right, guys, it was a quick review regarding the chapter 3 as well. So hope you are able to work with your problems, and hope I can solve it. Thank you.